Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Friday's live Q&A. And I hope everybody had a fantastic week. I know pretty much wherever you are, it's hot because it is hot. Oh, let me move that. It is hot where I am, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so it is 114 where I'm at. <laughs> So I thought I'd just share that. And before we get started, I'll make a couple announcements that I thought were kind of cool and exciting. Today I'm trying something new. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, uh, what I want to do was not to entice you to become a Patreon member. Don't do not do it uh, for any other reason. This is just to thank the ones that are already are. Um, from now on, videos, I'm going to release videos 24 hours in advance to you guys. So tomorrow's video is up and ready for you guys. Uh, the rest of you will see it tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's video is five pieces of gear I never reviewed and why. So we'll see how you guys like that. Uh, so, all right, let's get into it. The first one I see is, where was it? Is John. John says, hey, Phil, saw you quoted it in uh, the Washington Post. Yep, I was. Uh, I mentioned it last week that they had they had interviewed me. Um, it was cool because it, you know it was a it, it, when it comes to what's going on with the industry, it was nice to be questioned or, or, or you know to to have somebody interview you after interviewing like the president of Fender and the owner of Gibson and Paul Reed Smith. And I'm not sure why I was there, but there I am. Uh, so there you go. Um, and, uh, you know, and it ended up being, I thought, a, a good article. I mean, you know, it, it kind of hit some spots where it needed to and uh, was nice where it needed to. Um, I don't know why I fixated on the whole part where uh, Gibson was on the retreat, shot up some Fender guitars. I thought that just sounded strange to me, but hey, whatever it is. Um, and uh, there's already 220 of you guys already popped on watching. So, uh, all right, let's 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 get into some questions. Um, hey, Phil, this is from Michael. He says, hey, Phil, what are some acoustic guitars you like? You know, uh, Michael, I am like everybody else. I love Taylors and Martins. However, I live in a desert climate. And if you work on guitars in a desert climate uh, like I do, you start realizing that those guitars are, I call them goldfish. <laughs> they will, you need to take care of them or they will die very easy. They will crack. They will break. They need to be kept in cases and hum humidified. Um, so I've learned to just learn, learn like uh, guitars that can take a little bit more abuse. So for me, I own personally, I own three Breedlove acoustics and two Washburns and a bunch of Arts and Luthery acoustics. Um, and those are, are really good for me. Um, but uh, I really like Martin and Taylor. There's nothing wrong with them. I just think that with those guitars, you have to kind of weed through a bunch of them and find those ones that have been sitting. Some of the best Martins and Taylors I've ever seen have been sitting in music stores for a long time and they're kind of dried out and they're just really good. Um, but there's a lot of great brands out there. Uh, uh, Smilex Incorporated said Tak Takamini or uh, Martin. Um, I prefer Martin, but Takamini is such a great brand. Uh, brand, you know what I mean? It's just a preference, right? To me, it's not a preference of quality between those two. It's a sound. I like the Martin sound over the Takamini sound, but the Takamini is very, very good. I'd put it in my top five acoustics. My top five acoustic brands would be Martin Taylor, Takamini, uh, Breedlove, and and Washburn for me those are my five favorites so even though I like the Arts and Lutheries and Godin's as well I just they're a little unconventional unconventional so um, let's see next one is uh, I'm trying to find some unique and interesting questions um, okay so here's a question uh, so Simon wants to know what about a plastic or a fiber fiber acoustic uh, guitars in other words non uh, non so uh, non wood material acoustics well Martin makes one that's made out of Formica which if you're not familiar with that it's basically the top the top they put on countertops and uh, they are fantastic um, the only issues they have here again in the heat with Arizona is if you leave them in your car for even a few seconds the glue will get malleable and the tops will pull away from them and I've repaired a lot of those um, but differently than a than wood that pulls away they warp and sometimes they don't seem right and it's really hard to kind of heat that up and, and glue it back uh, so you do it but it's not very not very fun to deal with um, 
Very cool guitars. I like acoustic companies messing with alternate materials. I, one of the things about that Martin acoustic I like is that multi-laminate neck. Um, again, you should Google it. It's a really cool guitar. Um, I've owned a, uh, a Rain Song before. I liked it a lot. I like the acoustic ones that, uh, uh, that uh, PV now owns a little better than Rain Song. Um, but Rain Song is fantastic. Believe it or not, the Rain Song, the neck was really thin. And I after a while, I thought I liked that. And then after a while, I didn't. But really what happened with the Rain Song was here in, in the heat, if you're outside jamming, the the guitar neck got hot <laughs> right it started absorbing the heat from the from the sun and stuff and it it was it was a little bit it was like touching a hot stone so it wasn't very uh and, and if you left it, 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 it at all it would absorb the temperature uh those of us uh those of us older players might remember those old kramer necks with those aluminum necks doing that same thing um let's see uh uh let's see Next one. Oh, okay. So SM Coffee says, Hey, Phil, weren't you going to review a Godin A6? Been waiting two months uh, from GC and it still hasn't shipped. Um, you know, uh, what happened with the Godin A6 was I ordered one from Sweetwater. If you guys saw that Sweetwater video, I mentioned it at the end. And um, what happens at the end uh, is I sent it back. It was defective. So I ended up not getting one. I still plan to get one again. The, go the, the, the Godin A6 is one of my favorite acoustic, like electric type guitars, where it's like the Taylor T5. I had a Taylor T5. Um, I like the Godin A6 for the price much, much better. Um, and we have a super chat. It went to the top. Mike, Mike gave me a hundred dollars, which is more than I make in a week. Mike, that's really, really thankful. Uh, I appreciate that. That's pretty crazy, man. So I hope this answer, whatever I give you is good. Um, uh, it's going to be interesting. Let's see. I recently upgraded my PRS SE standard with Grover locking tuners. Okay. And love them. Me too. I was looking at the Tone Pros drop-in replacement for the PRS. Uh, do you think it's worth it? So the Tone Pros, the, the main thing that, that the players like about that, Mike, is that you can, you have the finite intonation, right? On that, uh, wraparound bridge. I assume that's what you're going for, right? The wraparound bridge. Um, yeah, I think it's an upgrade. Right, because think about this. The main thing with the SE, let's let, let, look at it this way, Mike. On the real, on the real American core PRS, and I call it the real just because it was the first one, right? The core guitars. He's using now an aluminum-based uh, uh, bridge, and 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 there's a reason for that. And so um, I think the Tone Pros is is good in a different way than that. So in other words, I would recommend. Uh, Mike, if you were looking at the American one, you could go to the Tone Pros and it'd be an improvement. So, um, but the only question I have is, and this is where the caveat comes in, is the, um, is that if it's not broken, don't fix it rule. So when you're looking at the Tone Pros, what is it that you're having an issue with? Are you having an intonation issue? Are you having a tone issue? Do you, 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 do you feel like the guitar, there's, you know, kind of like a, uh, a lemon squeezing that juice out to the last bit. Is there some more sound you feel like you can get to out of the guitar if you had that bridge? Um, if you love everything the way it is, leave it alone right the locking tuners we know why you did that that's a functionary thing they're gonna they're gonna be able to change your strings faster and make it a little easier to tune up faster we know what the improvement is the changing bridges is always a uh you fix it if you don't if you're not loving what you have or you think you can improve it you go if you're just doing it because you feel like dumping more money into the guitar we've all been there too it's 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 up to you the great thing about tone pros though is if you buy it from like guitar center or sweetwater or sam ash online or something like that you should be able to return it that's the one thing with parts um check to make sure what their return policy on parts are sometimes if you open the packaging they restock you or they won't return it so but if you can get a good return policy on it you can always just try it so there you go all right let's look for a another interesting an exciting question. Thank you again, Mike. That was really cool. <laughs> so that's going to world record, uh, probably across YouTube. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so Randy wants to know, hey, Phil, hello from Louisiana. Uh, I'm sure it's miserable in Louisiana right now because it's hot and mucky. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, what's up with Ampeg? I noticed a lot of pro bass players have gone to Harky. Yeah, okay, that's a good story. So let me tell you what happened with that. So Ampeg, uh, Ampeg, this is a, a, a funny story because it's 100% true, I swear. Um, so Ampeg was a company owned by St. Louis Music. And St. Louis Music owned Crate and Ampeg and Alvarez. And uh, they had Audio uh, Centron and a bunch of other brands, you know, right? And what happened was a company separate from that called Loud bought a company called 
called Mackie in distress. Everybody remembers Mackie, right? Mackie mixing boards. Um, and Mackie had made some mistakes. He made some great mixers, but he started getting the ADAT recorders and to compete with Elise's. And if you guys all remember that time, uh, getting into ADAT was a bad move because digital was on its way and it was going to, it was going to win. So long story short, um, Loud did this really interesting thing. They bought Mackie, shut down the American factory, shut everything down, moved it all to China and kept the prices the same. But what they did to cut costs was instead of having repair centers for warranty, you would just have send your defective Mackie back and they would replace it for free because the margins were so fat now because it went overseas. Again, I'm not, uh, saying this is good or bad, I'm explaining. So the plan works. So what do they do? They're an investment firm, they buy another company called St. Louis Music. Now in the long and the short of that is, they sold off Alvarez. And I think it got acquired back when they sold St. Louis off later. See how crazy all this gets? But more importantly, Loud now possesses and still does Mackie, Ampeg, and Crate, although Crate lays dormant now, they don't do anything with it. But anyways, with the Ampeg, what they did was they did the same plan. They shut down the American factory, and they, uh, it's, it's so crazy. Anyways, they shut down the American factory and everything, and they moved everything to Vietnam. So they started making the product in Vietnam, kept the prices the same. But they also kept that same strategy. So if you had a $1,300 American-made Ampeg amp, and it had an issue, if you wanted warranty, you would ship it back to them, and they would ship you a brand new made in Vietnam one. Now, you can imagine how some bass players felt, right? They were pretty upset, right? So... Long story short, that's what happened with Ampeg. That those kind of decisions ev eventually affect them. Not to mention the artists kind of don't feel like they weren't getting support. Me personally, I have a personal story to deal with that. I want Scott to see Metallica up close and personal, right? Uh, literally sit on the side of the stage because Robert Trujillo needed another Ampeg SVT4, I think is what we had to bring him. Uh, and anyways, because his was acting up and it was because the new Vietnamese ones kept acting up. So we had to bring him a backup. We brought him back up. They let us hang out at the show. I got to see Metallica during a dress rehearsal. That was cool. But, uh, you know, I don't think Robert Trujillo was too happy with the fact that his amp was acting up. And I'm sure a lot of us artists weren't. So they went to Harky. And the cool thing about Harky, so you know, is if you look at any Harky ad, at the bottom of the Harky ad is Larry Harky's phone number. And yes, you can call him directly anytime you want. So how crazy cool is that? All right, Super Chat. Uh, Adam gave me $10, but doesn't have a question. All right, Adam, I appreciate that. I'll put that towards the channel. Uh, and uh, I, thank you again. Dylan uh, has a Super Chat. He's giving me $10, and he's got a question. It says, hey, Phil, what do you think about the 60s reissue Mexican Fender? You're almost at 100,000 subscribers. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about the 100,000, you can imagine. Uh, and uh, the Mexican 60s Strat. Oh, awesome, right? Think of it this way. In tier, in tier how I look at it, me personally, as quality and and price, right? I look at the main Mexico here, and then I look at the uh, American uh, product, you know, like standard professional series uh, strats here, and then I look at the Mexican uh, reissue stuff right above the American stuff, and then I look at the American reissues right above them. And the reason I do that is um, in the Mexican uh, 60s reissues, 50 reissues strats, they have some really nice quality components in them that even the American professional standard series doesn't have, uh, like upgraded pickups and stuff. So, uh, very cool and used, they, they go for great value, but I still think they're, they're some of the sweetest values out there. In fact, I think, um, that's one of the things that Fender does that maybe is detrimental to their overall sales. I think that's a, the, 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 the Mexican made re, uh, reissue stuff is so good. I think that's where it really competes against the American product line, um, where the Mexican ones are almost as good as the American ones in every way. Um, I think those reissues are as good. So there you go for whatever that's worth. Let's go to the next one. Somebody's got a question. Hold on. It's jumping. I'm trying to get to all the, I'm trying to find juicy, good questions, something new and exciting. If you guys have something cool that you've never seen, please ask it. Um, the uh, um, next one. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. It says how David Lawrence wants to know, Hey Phil, what's your opinion of Epiphone master built? Uh, slope shoulder acoustic guitars ever played one um you know i'm not really familiar with the slope shoulder model um but i am familiar with epiphone master built i i've sold them i've played them i've worked on them um and i think we all know it, to me they're very good but i would say this as good as they are if you have one i think it's you made a great decision um but if you're looking at one please consider like recording king and eastwood 
I think it's Eastwood Guitars. Maybe it's Eastman. Eastman Guitars. Please look at those two examples too. Those two are very good uh, uh, acoustics that I think are slightly better priced than what the Epiphone Masterbuilt is. And and I don't think the Epiphone Masterbuilt has any uh, any negatives really to point out. I just think those are brands that you should also be considering too if you're looking at that brand. But uh, yeah, the Masterbuilt stuff is nice. Um, okay, next one. Okay, Seas of Neptune. Jimmy says, why do guitar companies not offer the same range for left-handed players despite there being a, a, a famous left-handed players? For example, Fairlight currently offers one Jaguar, which is almost a uh, 1,000 euros. Um, I've said this before, uh, Seas of Neptune, Jimmy. Uh, it's because they don't care about, and I mean on Fender, I mean the industry. The industry doesn't care about left-handed players. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying the truth. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you what it is. You know, Paul Reed Smith was rumored, I can't tell you for sure this is, but it was rumored that he said he shouldn't make left-handed guitars because there isn't left-handed pianos. Now, that's one of those rumors out there. I don't want to, uh, like I said, I said rumor. It's something I've never heard Paul Reed Smith say personally, but I have heard that he was the one that said it. Either way, that mentality is out there. Really, the truth of it goes like this. Um, less left-handed players are out there buying guitars, so retailers don't want to stock product for a finite amount of musicians. That's where the problem started. Now, the problem really is stupid now because with online sales, there should be a, a ton of products available, right? You have stores out there like Lefty Land and uh, the Left Emporium, all this stuff. There's all these guitar places that are just left handed players. They're trying to buy guitars from these manufacturers and they're getting the pushback. The manufacturers don't want to make them. Um, that's what I can't understand. You have com you have stores that are, that literally have gone to um, the manufacturers and say, "Hey, we'll buy 50, we'll buy 100 left-handed player uh, guitars, make them." And the manufacturers don't want to make them. That's where I don't understand. And I've asked the question, not being a left-handed player, but I've asked the question to manufacturers, and I've never gotten a good answer of why they won't do it, other than there's no market, which we all know that's not true. So it's just something that that they just say. <laughs> so for whatever that's worth. Okay, um, next. What else we got? 461 of us hanging out Friday. Appreciate that. Uh, I like it when you guys want to hang out and talk. And let's see. And uh, so far, this is stuff is cool. You guys got some cool questions today. Um, uh, Metal Maniac wants to know, do you still have the Blue Jackson? Yeah, it's in the other room. He's talking about the uh, Japanese-made Blue Jackson with the HSS pickups. I do. Um, in fact, I was going to set it up uh, yesterday, and I didn't get to it. Um, uh, I'll... I'll broke it. <laughs> I'll broke it. Says Phil. Have you tried the Washburn Parallel Access series? I have, uh, including the Parallel Access that has the Evertune system. Um, very cool guitars, kind of metal, right? Uh, I thought it was really cool. Um, I like the neck, the neck profile. Um, very, very unique looking. I thought, and and very cool vibe. Feeling wise, they felt pretty typical Ibanez uh, LTD. You know, right? Very, you know, nothing. Nothing that I felt was unique in the way it was set up or, or, or designed in the way it felt, but cool looking and they were built they were built well. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, let's somebody okay, I gotta look I gotta jump when I see you guys talking to each other. Chris said, I don't need five dollars, but never asked him a question. You guys, I understand the super chat thing. I'm I just started figuring out how it works. It pulls you guys to the top, but I can't I got to answer your question after I finish your question. So, um, and I appreciate you guys donating and stuff, but please don't feel the need to just try to answer a really good question. Right. Right. I'm, I'm more interested. I'm more interested in really cool questions than I am in, you know, getting some tips. So, although I do appreciate them, I, you know, like I said, immensely, cause it's really cool, but, uh, let's try, I'm trying to find cool content for us to kind of plus, you know, make an interesting conversation. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay, it says, hey, okay, so this is for Ryan. Ryan says, I put uh, put in the Super Chat last week, uh, but never got to it, uh, never got it. Anyways, best practice tube amp for an apartment. Really love Nirvana and Santana. Um, I'm partial to, to if, you, if you really want a good, effective, low-priced tube amp for that stuff, I would definitely look at 
the two that I like are the Blackstar 1 watt series. You might even look at the 5 watt series if you like. Both have headphone jacks, both can be tube, both sound really good, both are pretty affordable, and of course the uh, Fender Super Champ. I really like those. Those are really, really good amps at, at that effectively sound great at low volumes. Um, so it's not that, you know, right? It's not that they can sound good low. They sound great low. So there you go. I would I would look into those for sure. Um, plus, very affordable. Um, uh, Sean Blue says, what do you think of the Fender Special Edition Korean-made guitars? Uh, it has a small neck. It does. The neck is very, very thin. Um, and I, I like them. In fact, that neck feels exactly like, to me, the SE... Uh, custom 24s by Paul Reed Smith. It has that very tiny neck. So um, I think that's cool, right? I'm, that neck is a borderline too small for me because I have a pretty pretty big pause, but still, I still dig it for sure. So, okay, next we have... Oh, I jumped one. Let me go back. All right, it says... Okay, um, I'm going to mess up this name and I'm going to give it my best shot, right? It's Anu Anugra Ra Rakawa. I'm sorry if I mess up the names. I'll try my best. It says, hey, Phil, what are your thoughts on Tom Anderson guitars and CNG uh, ne Negrini guitars? Uh what other custom guitar company builder would you recommend? Okay, so Tom Anderson, there's a Tom Anderson dealer by me, and I've played some Tom Andersons, and uh, I've worked on a couple. Um, and Tom Anderson does not make a whole lot of guitars. They are very, very fine, fine instruments. They're up there with Sur, maybe even better than Sur guitars. And uh, I'm not familiar with the CNG guitars that you're that you're speaking about, but the Tom Anderson is great stuff. Um, those are guitars to me that they took the the best of what Ibanez Prestige ever did, and those high end, you know, kind of fit and finish builders and they took it to the next level so fantastic guitars if you're looking at those guitars um the only guitars i i, I recommend that you look at is um if you're trying to keep the price under control look at what gnl has to offer because believe it or not they make some good stuff and so does kiesel for that price point and if you're looking for something um that's like that line that's more affordable there's some import japanese high-end lines that are that are pretty cool too but tom anderson makes great stuff um i've almost bought a tom anderson at least two or three times so uh because of the because just the quality is so good um jim has a hard question i'm not going to be able to answer but i'm gonna give it a shot it says what are some remedies for a combo amp that buzzes rattles in the tubes a chassis or cabinet um that is tough. Uh, everybody has that problem with combo amps. That's why some people like heads and cabinets. Um, you know, the first thing off is obvious. It's going to be boring and lame, but you got to tighten all the screws and make sure that's right, right? Second thing is you're going to make sure your tubes are seated correctly, and if there's any covers, those are in place as well. Um, there's, there's really not a whole lot that I've been able to come across over the years that really fixes that other than tightening things down, making sure everything's, you know, and that includes replacing screws and nuts and stuff. Um, amps are vibrating, so they're going to get worse. If your amp's new and it starts out that way, it's going to get worse. That's what I tell everybody. So when somebody gets a new amp and it's vibrating, it's making noises, it's going to get worse because like a new car, as it drives, it's going to loosen because the fact that everything's vibrating and moving all the time. So um, the other only other thing I found personally for me is putting them on really Really nice good rubber feet or putting them on objects like amp stands and stuff uh, helps and that's why I use a shelving system for my amps I get them off the floor um, I use nice rubber feet I do what I can that way but there's just nothing so there you go uh, and uh, Lance said, did you see the article, The Death of the Electric Guitar, published by Washington Post? Uh, my thoughts? Uh, yeah, you know, I liked it. It was a good article. Um, I thought they did a good job. Um, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but it was still it was still very cool. Okay, Sean has got a question. Sean says, please elaborate on the Super Champ. Good with pedals? Question mark. Comparison with uh, solid state modeling? Uh, like the Katana 50? Thanks for the content. Okay. So here's the deal with the Super Champ for me. I love the Super Champ. I think it's one of my favorite all-time $300 tube amps ever in the history of tube amps at 300 bucks, right? Um, however, I had a friend who doesn't like it, and he was determined to prove me wrong. So we did a shootout with so many amps, including solid state amps. And when doing that shootout, as much as I loved the Super Champ, we agreed that the Champion 40 solid state amp by Fender and the Katana 50 sounded better. 
Um, now better is a is a hard term, right? That's like a taste test with friends, you know, you know, and you're, everybody's deciding, you know, it, you know, they're 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 filtering, right? We're filtering our own own opinions through what we perceive. However, yeah, I think the Super Champ. So to answer your question, Super Champ does take pedals well. The Super Champ has a great great clean channel. It takes pedals well. It's got some cool things. Um, but compared to, to modeling amps. I think it's marginally different and better, right? Um, but I can tell you this: um, if I was going to pick the Super Champ combo or the Cantana 50, it depends. The only difference to me is this: the Super Champ offers one thing the Cantana can't, because it has a two power section. It can warm pedals up. When I say warm them up, when you run pedals through tube amps, they pedals sometimes have a shrill harshness to them, and tube amps. And that's why the marriage between a pedal and an amp is so important. The amp adds the the fullness, the body. The pedals add the tone if you're using pedals. And so there's something about having a tube amp with pedals. Um, but that's a 50-50. Um, if it was me right now, what would I pick? I would pick the Katana 50 So over the two amps. So, And I really like the Super Champ, so that's saying something. Okay. Um, let's see. Next was... Okay, here's a good one because Joe's Joe's got a good question. Joe McKinney says, Phil, what's your favorite amp under 25 watts for the bedroom, uh, which is pretty much where I play most of the time. And it says, uh, bedroom, hard rock, and blues. Uh, still high on the Friedman Run 20. He wants to know if I'm still uh, you know, in honeymoon mode. My Run 20 is right over here. I'm running it through now a Marshall 412 cabinet. I really, really like it. Uh, I would definitely consider it one of the best 20-watt uh, tube amps out there for sure. Well, but I can tell you this. is As cool as it is, it's only I only have it because of I, I, a fixation to have like a Marshall type tone, um, but for uh, a 25 watt uh, amp, especially if you're talking about a head, right? Amp head. Um, I prefer still my Mark V Mini over the Friedman. That's just my preference, especially even for blues. I know that sounds weird. Everybody kind of associates to metal. I use the 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 clean channel and a little bit of tube screamer in front of it, and it's fantastic for me. Um, and uh, they're about the same price on par, so there you go for that. Um, and um, but I, I really still like both, but I, I prefer my my mark. I still use the mark the most. So um, next, uh, Ricky says hundred thousand subscribers. Let's go. Yes, yeah, right. We're getting close. In fact, so you know, the big announcement should be tomorrow. We're gonna be at ninety eight thousand subscribers tomorrow, which means I'll give away the first acoustic guitar. The only problem I'm having is, is uh, I don't know if anyone's ever dealt with this. I've dealt with this now with them recently this week. Charities do not seem to want to a receive free product, b money, or c free advertising. I can't get them to really respond to me, even though I'm telling them that I want to give them help. Um, so I'm having trouble finding and getting charities to take the stuff. Uh, it's a little frustrating because um, uh, I didn't think it was going to be that hard. I thought I was going to just make a phone call and everybody would just be willing to, to take my help. So we'll work on that. I'll get that resolved tomorrow. Again, like I said, I'll post the videos of me uh, giving the guitars away on the Facebook. Um, let's see. Uh, Incafish23 says... Kudos on the Washington Post article. Question and other comment. Ah, uh, Incafish, I got to find you then. So I will do my f best to find you in the other comment. Um, and if I don't, just repost it. I'll be looking for it, I promise. Uh, we're probably going to have to eventually get... There's 550 of us, so 549. So we'll probably have to I'll probably have to start getting a moderator. Is that what a moderator? Is that what it is? It's not a mediator. Uh, somebody to moderate all this stuff. Uh Okay, Chuck, uh, this is a question we've touched on before, but I want to answer it because it's a good question. Ch uh, Chuck Dickens says, are single coil size humbuckers from Seymour Duncan just as good as their bigger brothers? And the answer is no. They are not just as good. They're uh, um, they are fine and they sound great. I own a bunch, uh, uh, but no. Would I ever pick them over a humbucker a size, a full size humbucker pickup? Uh, no. The only reason I do it is because you, you, ha you have no choice. 
right? You have a single coil size position and you put it there. Um, but ultimately a full size humbucker will always sound bigger and fuller. Um, and, uh, and it's so much so that I would be willing to test my ears. If you use two, the same guitar and you put a mini humbucker, uh, of equal, like let's say a JB junior and a JB, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to hear the JB every time and, 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 and pick which one's which not as a bad or good thing, but as a, yep, that's slightly fuller sounding. I know that's the humbucker. So there you go. Um, next one, it says, oh, here's a good one. It's cause it's a hard, impossible question. Jeffrey wants to know, Phil noise gate pedal that doesn't suck tone. Um, you know, my experience is they all do. That's why I hate using them. That's why I will constantly push back down the, the gain, you know, right. I will force myself, um, to not play as much gain. So I don't have to have a noise gate. Um, um, but some of the things about noise gates that's important to know is that there's a difference between uh, a noise gate and like a noise suppressor. I know that sounds weird, but there is a slight difference um, in, in what those pedals are going after. Um, uh, me personally, uh, the ISP decimator is what everybody everybody likes. I like the MXR stuff. Um, I've had good luck with that. Um, but the only way to get it to not suck tone is to get it out of your signal path. Just how it works. So you got, it's the, it's the, it's a little bit of take, right? A little give, a little take. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Um, some of you guys are asking questions. You're just telling me things, which I appreciate. There is. Oh, okay. You know what, Adam? I'm going to answer your question because uh, I know it's going to be an important question. Adam wants to know, what do you think the best amp for college is? Uh, I am into bluesy hard rock as well as metal. Should I go for a modeling? Which, you know what, <laughs> Adam? You're going to find you have no room and you have uh, roommates that have no respect. So what you're going to want to do is get some kind of interface uh, and just just keep keep. You want to keep things. If I, if I could suggest something to you, get a good guitar case that locks and make sure that everything that you have that's important goes inside your case. So you put your guitar in your case, your cable, uh, you know, use your phone, right? Get iRig, right? Plug in, use headphones, right? Uh, you're not going to need a whole lot of playing, uh, you know, right? You have Bluetooth speakers. I have one over there. You could Bluetooth your guitar to the Bluetooth speaker if you need to hear it out louder. But the odds are, you know, your roommate's going to be studying when you want to practice. They're going to be, you know, sleeping when you're going to want to practice. Um, so my my best bet is get used to headphones, get something easy, portable, cheap, some kind of iRig format, some kind of pocket amp. Um, but what you'll find is that you can buy an interface and a, and a iRig app uh, or way cheaper than you can buy any kind of small pocket amp and for quality of tone. So that's what I recommend. Okay. Um, okay. William has a good question. William Logan wants to know, will shielding paint devalue my Gibson Les Paul studio if done well, of course? Uh, no. Um, you know, the fear on that would be when people mod guitars, that's that, the whole fear of modding guitars is this. What, what's what, when somebody picks up like a, a vintage instrument or a, 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 about to be a vintage instrument and people have done serious modifications. I don't think shielding paint is a modification that would ruin the value of a, a, a Les Paul studio. Um, I would never see it to be a problem. Um, and if 20 years it is, yeah, you could just find me and tell me how wrong I was, but I'm pretty sure I'll be right. Uh, I really feel pretty confident in that, that you could be okay with that. Um, the, um, oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Bill in char, Mr. Bill and Char says, what would be a good, uh, what would you recommend for a good replacement pickup in a Mexican made Stratocaster? Um, you know, uh, the funny thing is uh, a little secret about a lot of my guitars. A lot of my American Strats that have single coil pickups, what happens is they all have a Mexican made uh, pickup in the bridge and then two American pickups. So I actually like the Mexican made bridge pickup. It's a little fatter and, and thicker. It's less fender sounding, less stratty tone. So if that's the problem you're having is you want more of a stratty tone, I would go with either the Fat 50s or the Texas Special. Uh, those are two great pickups that you could get relatively inexpensive used or pick them up and, and check them out and you'll, I think you'll enjoy them. Um, so there you go. There is next. The, okay. Um, Let's see. 
Oh, P Rails question? Let's try it. Okay, we'll give it a Ari wants to know, hey Phil, thoughts on the scene we're dunking P Rails. I have a, a HSS strat uh, style guitar that might give more versatility. Yeah, the Duncan P Rails are pretty cool, right? Um they, if you're not familiar with them, what they are is uh, for everybody else. It's a pickup that Seymour Duncan makes that's literally a P, uh, P90, a single coil, or it can be a humbucker. And uh, if you hook it up to their, um, their uh, they, they have a humbucker uh, frame pickup system that has a switch that lets you sw- select between all of those and you can set it up. Um, I've found the best luck with those in Strat style guitars uh, because it's kind of a cool way. A P90 in the bridge of a Strat is a really cool and unique thing and I think it sounds really great. Uh, that's a pickup I would definitely recommend uh, for Strat. I've, I've told people uh, many times before I don't highly recommend it for other guitars but for Strats I've had great luck re- uh, installing them for sound. Um, Devin wants to know, this is a good one. Devin wants to know what's my thoughts on the Marshall DSL 40 C for gigging. I think 40 Watts through a tube amp is perfect for, uh, for, um, for gigging, right? I don't see why, um, you'd have any trouble, um, having any issues with that, right? The it's 40 Watts tube is definitely loud enough for sure. Oops. Just kicked me. There you go. All right. Next. Oh, it jumped again. It's uh there's 581 of us, so it sometimes it jumps around a little bit. Okay. Les Paul Lover is saying, Hey Phil, I'm thinking of getting a 1959 Marshall Plexi Super Lead. I, I I'm assuming you mean reissue, otherwise you got some money. That's good. Uh, but okay, for Angus Young, Un- Angus Young tone thoughts. Please answer. Please, please, please. Well, that's that's the, the to me that's the holy grail. I look at Plexi's almost weekly. Um, they're fantastic. One of my favorite amps I've ever played in my whole life was a Plexi. Uh, uh, the only problem with Plexi's is you got to turn them up, and I don't think they have the magic once you run them through a hot plate or a attenuator. So, um, so that's the downfall of that. In fact, less. To, to answer your question, yeah, if the answer is, should you get a Plexi Super Lead uh, to get the Angus Young tone? Yes, absolutely. However, if you're at home and you're doing any kind of bedroom playing or at home or slight, uh, quiet recording at night, um, you ha- you're going to have the same problem everybody has. Everybody wants that sound, but without that volume of the amp. Um, so something to think about. So... Uh, let's see. Next one. Uh, okay, so Akuna, Akuno, Akuno, again, if I butcher names, which I'm gonna, I'm sorry. Hi, Phil. I've asked a few times, but perhaps you want to stay away from the subject. Nope. There is 600 of us. So you got to understand these questions just are hard to find. Okay. So it says, uh, how about a video on ghost build AK slash during the ghost guitar player? Yeah. You know, I, I did the, I kind of tested the water with that when I did the maxless Paul videos. Um, you know, one of the things that I, ha- I, I I get a lot on YouTube is that when I'm playing a riff and they go, oh, that's you didn't play the right riff. I, I wish you guys could understand how the world is when you add money to it. Okay, so when you make a YouTube video, that's great. But when you make a YouTube video and you monetize it, you are now basically claiming everything in your video is yours, right? And you deserve money for it. So it gets scary when when... You know, it doesn't take much research to find out that YouTube is not going to back anybody when it comes to a copyright disputes. So when I do stuff on YouTube, I'm constantly concerned that I'm going to get YouTube strike for copyright issues. And only because it's not even the money aspect of what I might lose or have to deal with. It's the time. It's the, you know, right. They they can win just because they can uh, t- t- tear you down with time. So um, I thought about the ghost building videos and stuff, and 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 that's why I want to see what happened with Max, uh, the Max Les Pauls. Um, I was curious to see who would get upset, who would come out of the woodwork, and really no one did. The only person that contacted me about the Max Les Paul video was Max himself, um, and he didn't have any issues, <laughs> right? Uh, he, he wished it was a little less profile than that, but he ultimately liked the video. And I thought for sure that was going to be a So that's some, a video I'd like to get into. Yeah, I, I'll definitely look at the ghost building. Because if you're familiar with the 80s and 90s, you know that was a huge thing, ghost building. Um, so there you go. Uh, 
Okay, uh, Mitch has got a great question. Mitch, do you think we're going to start seeing more man-made materials and guitars soon with the new Rosewood laws? Yes, absolutely. This week alone, I have talked to four different major manufacturers on the phone in length about this Rosewood issue. And uh, yes, um, and um, some of them are fine. They're what, more importantly than that, they're all finding different ways. You know, G&L Guitars is... Uh, uh, found a wood, uh, Chechen is the wood, and it's apparently like rosewood or in the rosewood family, but wasn't restricted. I know very little. I just started looking at it last night because they they uh, suggested it to me. GNL Guitar suggested it uh, as looking into it that they're that they're doing that. Um, so yeah, definitely going to see man, more man-made materials. Definitely going to see more alternatives to rosewood. This rosewood issue is here. It's not going anywhere. If anything, it's just going to get worse. And so no, you'd be you'd be making a bad move as a manufacturer if you weren't figuring some other some other thing out. Uh, uh, I lost the name. It was Jack something. Said how many guitars do you own? Um, that was the question. Um, I always say I keep about 21 in, 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 in my inventory 20, but it's really more like 35 right now. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it moves, but about 35, uh, uh, <laughs> Sig Flying V says, Signature Flying V, Sig Flying V says, will there be a hundred thousand subscriber know your gear theme? Yes. Uh, a uh, theme, yes. Uh, I will do a special video for 100,000 subscribers. Uh, we're going to do a couple cool things. I really want to make this. You guys got to understand something. That, and it, this is all about you. Everything is about you, right? You guys uh, create the, you guys are watching, you're creating the views, you guys are, are subscribing. Um, 100,000 subscribers is uh, is a little celebration about of me, but it's a big celebration of, of the community we've built here. We've built a community. Um, you know, the, the truth is there's not that many jerks here. It's great, right? We, you know, I see a few here and there, but we kick them out as fast as they come in. And the truth is there's such a minority here in the size that they just can't live, right? And I see that every day and I'm very aware of that. And you guys, I think you see that too. Um, and they try, but they don't, they don't stay because there's just too many cool guys and gals here just to want to talk about gear and don't care about the rest of the junk. And, um, so no, I want to celebrate that because like I said, I, I feel very lucky. This is my dream in life, not to be on YouTube, but my dream in life is to sit and hang and talk about guitars. Man, there's nothing more I could ever wish to do in my entire life than talk about guitars with a bunch of people who care about it versus what I've been doing for years, which is at friends' parties, making everybody listen to guitar talk when they want to talk about other stuff. Um, they, so thank you again, and yes, we're going to do some stuff. I'll keep announcing stuff every day. Uh, um, oh, and Spencer's great question, Spencer. Spencer's like, hey, what's the deal with the roller nut? It seems like a good idea, but I don't see them much. Yeah, Spencer, this is the constant problem with guitar building, right? They invent something that's really cool that works. The roller nut keeps the guitar in tune, but then there's all these theories about how it changes the tone and stuff, and that's what happens. Um, and my experience is it doesn't change the sound, and they work fantastically, so I've had no issues. So, uh, but, but you can't build... Or you can't beat uh, the mentality of, of the guitar player. They just they just like what they like, and they're not going to change. Let's see. Um, Adam Adam just super chatted five dollars, but he didn't have a question. So hopefully I answered a question for Adam. Um, the uh, okay next. Oops, let me go back. I'm sorry. I want to I jump screens. Okay, um, six hundred six of us hanging out. So very cool, and. Uh, Roy, Roy Jackson says, do you recommend court guitars? I do. Um, funny enough, if you guys have heard anything, please put it in the comments when the video posts later. I've been hearing rumblings of rumors of court guitars not really playing nice with the new uh, Sides rules. Um, uh, so I don't know what's going on with that, but I hear a lot of the reasons why we're not getting a lot of the guitars in the U.S. is because court's having issue. And I've heard they're having issues, and then I've heard that they're basically uh, having not issues with functional, but but uh, they, uh, they're having issue. They don't like it. So I don't know. So if you guys heard anything too, uh, please post in the, in the comments. I'll make sure I read them. I, I haven't heard anything. I've been looking and asking and I haven't heard anything, but I just curious. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, star 
Fire Mail. Starfire Mail? I hope I'm saying that right. Have you ever used Band in the Box? If so, what do you think? Um, I've used Band, a Band in the Box type product before. I don't know if there's Band in the Box. Is, is, is that a software or something? Um, but I've used like uh, all kinds of drum machines and, and programs that are, all, you know, all the instruments in one thing. And uh, and no, I think that's great, right? Um, that's what I do late at night is I jam along with uh, drum tracks or, or uh, you know, songs. I play songs with other, you know, within the, the album. I have um, a couple products that really eliminate, eliminate the guitar out of the, a, a, a song so I can play with the song and just hear the, uh, right? Plus there's jam along track websites that you can do and find that without the, with the guitar parts removed that are pretty cool. You just Google it. Um, by the way, 620 to one of us. So uh, very cool hanging out. Let's see. Uh, Bruce says mailing address so you can send uh, so I can send you some pics and a shirt. Uh, Bruce, you know that's a question that came up recently. I have a PO box and everything set up. I will make sure it's put publicly on the Facebook page. So just go to the Know Your Good Facebook page, Brian, uh, or sorry, Bruce, and I'll make sure that that's uh, posted for everybody. Because um, yeah, I had a couple of you guys reach out and say I want to trade shirts with you, and I'm definitely for that. I would like to wear. Uh, something besides the Know Your Gear t-shirt sometimes. I wear them a lot. <laughs> it's like a uniform almost. Uh, Scott Monk wants to know, are Parker guitars are, are okay? They're okay. Um, you know, I have one. Um, they, they have problems with the electronics, but other than that, I think they're fantastic guitars. Um, I love almost everything about them except for, uh, you know. Uh, Jim Chase says, hey, Phil, give guitars to school music departments uh they would be very appreciative you know what speaking as teacher jim that's a great suggestion you know what um i thought about that as well um because that's what i was hoping i was hoping to find charities that are local i really didn't want to have to ship any guitars i was like you know right i'd like just to walk them down or you know drive down walk them in and give them to them uh and if that's what it takes that's what i'll do i'll walk down and just give them um to a school uh, pr project. And, and then I don't know how everybody feels about this, but I'll tell you how I feel. Um, I, I want to look into it a little bit when I go to the schools because I live, you know, I live in uh, like a middle-class community, community, right? I don't want to give guitars to my, my, my kids' schools, right? I want to go and find schools that really could use the, the support, right? Um, my daughter's school is an art school, so it literally is, is, is got guitars and everything in it. So I don't want to support, you know, uh, that I want to help us. Uh, I want to give the whole point of this is to give guitars to people who can't get them. That's what I want to do, right? I I, I think you know, right? Uh, I, I think that does the best. So we'll see if I can do that. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Next one. Next question. Uh, all right. Here we go. And we're, by the way, we're at the 10 minute warning. So just to let you guys know. Shaman Blue says, hey, Pixie, Pixie, Licks, Baker, and Hosa. Dang. What? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry, Shaman. I lost you a little bit. Uh,. Oh, somebody just asked and it jumped. I'm sorry. I think I lost the person's. Um, oh, I think I found it. It's about cables, and I really okay. So, so Mighty uh, McLovin says, "Hey, what's the best budget instrument cable?" You know, Mighty McLovin. I'll tell you. You know, you probably hear this a lot of times. There's going to be definitely two schools of thought when it comes to guitar cables, right? There's the one school that says, "Hey, buy the best cables," and there's the one school that says, "All cables are the same. Buy cheap cables." What I've learned is this: I don't buy a cable that doesn't have the name of the company on the cable. A little secret about cables that you should really, really be made aware of. Most, if not all, reputable companies that make cable warranty, but don't warranty, they guarantee cable. The difference between a guarantee and a warranty is a warranty is like, if you follow these rules and it goes wrong, we'll replace it. A guarantee means they it's guaranteed. So if your dog chews your cable up, you should be able to take your chewed up, dog chewed cable and get a brand new one with a 100% guarantee. And I have, I have personally done that many times with my cables. In other words, something happens, right? And I just take it back and get a new cable. So the trick that I've learned though is, is everybody's like, oh, I lost the receipt or I lost the packaging. But what I've learned is if it's a lifetime 100% guarantee, then it doesn't matter when you bought it because it's a lifetime, it's forever. So all it really matters is that they have to identify their, their, their product. What's great is the packaging on guitar cables is generic. In other words, um, 
the they don't have individual serial numbers, right? They're not non-serial numbers ca- packaging. So you can you can take any current package and go, okay, that's my packaging to scan the barcode so you have a product code, and then to give them the cable. But the cable, I've learned a little trick with these cable companies. If they put their name on it, they will definitely. So like Hosa for sure. Uh, you know, um, I've had great luck with Planet Waves, which is Diadero for sure, right? And I'm sure a lot of you had a lot of great. Uh, you know, con, uh, uh, good cables and bad cables, but these those are two that I've had great luck with. You get a get a cable like that, and my only personal issue with cable is simple. If I if I plug a cable in the amp and my guitar, I don't care if it's heavy distortion, no distortion, whatever. If I move the cable anyway, and I can hear that through the amp, any kind of movement, touching like a microphone, uh, then that cable is no good for me. So that's all I care about. If I can't hear me tapping on the cable or moving it, then the cable's fine. That's good enough quality for me. Uh, and I don't need to spend any more money and I make sure that I get it replaced because what I found is no cable lasts. So I killed them all. All right. Hope that helps a little. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Somebody was saying guitars for vets. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, I can't officially say it yet cause I got it's my budget, right? I haven't really reached out to companies to do giveaways yet for any of the hundred thousand things. So everything I'm doing, it's, it's my money, right? <laughs> or right? So, so it's, you know, I, I got to have a reasonable budget. My plan, I hope is to do three guitars for charity. I want to do it for schools. And then I thought I'd do something extra for vets. If the school thing doesn't work out entirely, maybe I'll just give one to the vets and two for the schools, or I'll maybe I'll add another guitar to it. But I, I, I do stuff with vets. Uh, I don't, I don't say all the time. That's not, that's misleading, but I do things at least semi annually, annually, uh, for vets programs. Um, it's just because, you know, obviously, you know, I, I'm prior service. So, and I, I really appreciate the, the men and women that serve. Um, so, oh, so Hose Tech, somebody said, oh, so uh, B, uh, BC Rich uh, 581 says, Hose Tech, odd to see a manufacturer on here. Yeah, well, Hose guys are cool, man. I don't know if you guys saw it. They sent, like, every major YouTuber got a Hose uh, love package, care package. Um, and that might seem. Uh, uh, cool or weird. I'm not sure depending on how you guys look at it, but really what it is, is great because, you know, um, it's nice to be supported, right? Uh, they, they didn't ask any for anything in return. All right. And, um, I'm going to do some reviews of some of the stuff that they, they sent me because a couple of things I've been in love with, I can't stop using them. Um, so I, I didn't want to just do a shout out to them. I want to actually give them a, a legitimate review because I was shocked. Um, in fact, uh, I'm more than impressed. So, so if they're on here, uh, that's even more support. I appreciate that even much. I know they've been on here before too, supporting the channel. Um, so yeah. And who doesn't use Hosa products, right? It's like the, it's, I mean, everybody uses a Hosa product, right? It's the best stuff out there for, right? They make every kind of connection and cable. I guess we're doing a little commercial for Hosa, but you get the idea. It's like a cool, cool company, cool vibe. Always, always cool. Yeah. Jared, MB215 said, Jared Dines did a video where he went through the whole line of Hosa. Yes. Same thing. They sent me basically the same package. Uh, so it was, it was just overwhelming. In fact, I'd been still processing it in. Um, all right, so let's get to questions because we're running out of time and we're at like a seven-minute window. Um, I can't say the name. I'm going to try it. Joya Maya says, do you recommend putting lemon oil on a fretboard? I recommend putting... Uh, hey. that's What do I have? Uh, you know what? I, I use bunch of different brands. I'm actually trying right now the Hosa one they sent me. I'm back to Hosa again. Um, I have the case freshener right here, but I had their aluminum oil. The the only thing I want to show you, I know I I, I have their their stuff. I, I'm just telling you, the only rule I follow is this. I always take the lemon oil and it's always on the rag, right? Um, light, mist it, you know, right? And then lightly touch it. Um, the only issue, I've heard all kinds of bad things about putting lemon oil on your fretboards. Um, and it's not lemon oil. Usually it's linseed oil with lemon scent and stuff, but it doesn't matter. All you have to know is this. The concern that most technicians are going to have is that you don't want to saturate your fretboard so much that the frets feel like they, they can't bite into the wood, right? And they release. So just mild. And I found that you almost need almost none. In fact, um, one suggestion I would give to every company is this is a bottle. Let's say this isn't it, but let's say this is a bottle of, of uh, lemon oil they give you. This is really the size it needs to be, right? 
I mean, uh, it, it, people are, are unfortunately, we, we see and then we, we kind of, you know, figure out from what we see. When you see a big bottle, you just think you use a lot of it. The truth is, um, if you bought a bottle of lemon oil like this big, uh, it should last you so long that it should start separating in about a year or two and then you throw it away. Uh, so, so there you go. So don't use much of it and you'll be fine. And I only use it to make your fretboard look nice. That's the only reason I've had. I've never had any issues with it, needing it. Um, all right. Uh, let's do a couple more questions. Um, G3CKO keeps asking. So I saw it a couple times. I want to give him some credit for, for, for trying so hard. It says, hey, Phil, have you ever tried the orange CR120 solid state amp? That's the orange crush, right? Uh, 120. I don't know if I tried the 120. They come in different versions, right? I've tried one of them. Um, I thought it was one of the best solid state type amps I've ever heard. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Um, and uh, I thought uh, it had a really good uh, tone to it, right? Um, and one of the few things I don't own is an orange amp, and it's weird. I, I every time I play one, I like it, and I, yet I never pull the trigger. So um, I, I might do it. <laughs> I might just do it now. Maybe it's in my craw now. Uh, okay, uh, helmet P. Good question. Says, hey Phil, your thoughts on why more amp maker, makers don't have one watt or five watt amps, especially made. Uh, in respective countries, England, U.S. Yeah, I know exactly why. You know, you know, uh, helmet. I, I've I've talked to so many companies. What I learned is that it's expensive. That's really what it is. It's it's crazy to think this way, but it's it's true. If you look at the components of an amp, right? Let's say a hundred watt amp. Take something take something as simple as a 25 watt, a 50 watt amp, and then a one watt and a five watt and a hundred watt amp. Take those amps, right? If you break them down to components and parts, they almost all cost the same right? A transformer, uh, a small transformer for like, say a five watt amp and a transformer for a 50 watt amp are literally like $10 in difference in price. Yet we expect to buy a one watt amp and a five watt amp for three, $400, two, $300, right? So, so that's why the manufacturers have trouble with it. Um, when I talked to them, I thought they were crazy. I did as much research into it as, as possible. And what I learned over the years is they're absolutely right. That, In fact, I talked to a, a friend of mine who's an amp builder, and I even tried to get him to buy uh, build me the ultimate one watt amp. And the only issue is he's willing to do it. He's a great guy and he's really talented. But when we crunch numbers, you know, his labor is the same right? It takes the same amount of time to build that amp as it builds any other amp. Uh, you know, right? Uh, so tubes are really just ex not that expensive when it comes to the whole heart of it. So his other components, when he takes the time and factors in and wrapping the vinyl and do all this stuff, you know, it wasn't the same price, but it wasn't half. And that's what you'd want to at least pay. So, so I think that's why a lot of manufacturers do that. And then you're limited too. When you make a one watt, five watt amp, that's all that amp can do. It can't be louder for a gig. But if you make a 25 watt, a 50 watt, a 15 watt amp that switches down, now you have a two customer market. You can sell it to a customer who wants a lower wattage and switch it down, or you want the. So that's that's the main issue I've seen. Um, you know, I'd like I'd like more companies to spend time in it. I'd like to see more one watt amps out there actually. So. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to do two more questions and we're going to call it a Friday. Ready? Uh, the next question. Next question. Um, I know, now I'm pausing because I'm trying to find a good one. Next. Okay, the question is. Somebody asked what they should have for dinner. I have no idea. <laughs> it's not a gear question. I think you should play guitar. <laughs> um, okay, la last one of the last two questions. Ready? Uh, what is the difference between a two, uh, $200 212 cabinet and $800 212 cabinet? Nothing. <sighs> the, the, you know what? I mean, we all know that, right? It's a wood box. I've said this many times. I'll say it over. Uh, it's backwards. I wish the world would flip on us, right? I, 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 every time I see a, an American made 212 cabinet where the box was made in the US, but the two speakers are made in China, I would really wish that to be the opposite. I'd rather have a Chinese box with two American or British made speakers, but uh, no, I, right? It's stupid. I, I, I have the same problem everybody has with this. Um, I cannot figure out that math ever. You know, I have the Freeman uh, uh, Run 20. I want the 112 cabinet. $600 for a box? 
right, with a speaker in it. That speaker is like $100, okay? So then it's $500 for a box. You could buy a couch. You could buy a Lazy Boy chair. You could buy a chair that reclines electronically for $500. Uh, no, speaker, it's, it's, there's no difference. But the problem is, is if you want the cabinet to match. Now, their argument is that there's subtleties in the quality construction, better quality materials, right? That's all true, but does that triple or quadruple the price of the cut? No, no, it's stupid. Um, but sadly enough, if you're like me, I like things that match. So I have cabinets that match. But I've over time, I've just decided if I'm going to throw money into something, I buy Marshall and Mesa Boogie cabinets. There's nothing wrong with them. I like them. I have them. And when I switch amps later, I just keep those. So that's why I have a, a Friedman amp sitting on a Marshall cabinet because I'm not going to keep buying cabinets. Cabinets are silly and, they're, and I found no issue with it the, uh, using the cabinets I like. Okay, last question. Ready? Here we go. Uh, okay, first one, I just because I want to put it on the notes so later it's on the question, on the index. Uh, Hush Tone Bob says, what do you think of the new boss pedals announced today? I didn't see them, but I will check them out. So this will be in the index. And the last question is... Oh, you guys are talking to each other about cabinets and MDF and all that stuff. Yeah, right? It's... Right? Um, okay, the question is... Marwan Almari says, Fender American Pro or American Elite? Uh, and I, in other words, which one do I like better? I like the American Elite, I think, a little better. Um, I'm not really sure, right? Uh, I didn't end up getting either one. Uh, that's what happened. I just didn't fall in love with either. There was a bunch of issues that I found that I just didn't love. There were nothing wrong with the quality of guitars. Just I, they didn't pull me out of my current guitars I had. So I had them for a while. I tried them, and then I decided not to go. So... There you go. All right, guys, we did it. We did another Friday Live QA. There's 643 of us hanging out. That's a lot of us hanging out. You guys had some great questions. I appreciate it. Uh, I like I like it when you ask great questions. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me today. That was right. It's always nice. And uh, as always, guys, I want to thank you so much for your time. And uh, look for tomorrow's video. And as always, uh, thank you and know your gear.